This is Ian Williams for V3, and today we have a very interesting guest with us. As most people will know, it's the 40th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission, which saw NASA put the first men on the moon. What people don't know is that a civilian by the name of Theo Kamake was commissioned to capture that entire historic launch on film and create a documentary time capsule. Theo, thank you very much for joining us here today. Theo, let's start with you. Tell us what happened back in 1969. Well, NASA knew that uh, this was going to be the big one, and <clears throat> they didn't want to have just a, 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 an ordinary documentary made about it. So <clears throat> they sought out a little uh, film company in New York City that had a reputation of making the best documentary films, and, um, and that company asked me, a very small company, but they, th that company asked me to do the film, and uh, so I took over the project, and. NASA was absolutely great. They, they didn't tell me what to do. They didn't tell me what not to do. They gave me access to everything and just, just said, just make a good film. I mean, that, that's pretty uh, amazing given that I mean, you were the only civilian allowed anywhere, anywhere near the entire project. Well, for certain, for certain things, yeah, mm. because they couldn't have the press uh, mucking things up. They couldn't create a circus or there would be mistakes, distractions, all that. It wasn't a matter of secrecy. Mm. Um, so at Launch Control uh, in in uh, Florida, where <coughs> where the, the it's called the firing room, uh, it's a, a very large room with uh, hundreds of technicians and scientists in there, and uh, <coughs> they didn't want any civilians in there, just as, from a distraction point of view. But they let me in. Uh, I was the only civilian, and even the cameraman that I was using had to be a NASA employee so that he would know what not to do. <laughs> right. And um, <clears throat> that was kind of a remarkable experience, being the only, the only non-NASA person in there and standing next to Werner Von Braun watching his toy rocket that he dreamed of since a kid going to the moon. Excellent. And tell us a bit about, about the, your procedure of making the documentary and, and kind of what you were looking for uh, when, when, you, when you were making it. Yeah, well, there's, there's any number of ways you could make a documentary film about that. <clears throat> um, but I decided to make, it, um, uh, to make it simple, to make it like uh, um, a, a tale told of an epic adventure, and um, uh, to make it have a human content to it um, so that it would work either then or sometime in the future, and somebody could look at the film and not be perplexed by the technology and uh, uh, get a feel for what 1969 was like on Earth. Excellent. But now, given that, I mean, the huge popular interest, especially at the time and even over the years in, in, in anything relating to space travel and, and, and sort of lunar expedition, why, why was this, this, whole, this footage and this, this documentary you created was never released to the public? Well, uh, it, it, that's not exactly true, right. but the public wasn't interested. You know, that's a, that's a misconception. People have not always been, at the time, they were very interested in the, in the flights to the moon, but they got all of this from television, so they weren't particularly interested in seeing it in a film, even a good film. Um, and so if the public wasn't interested, the distributors weren't interested. It was just out of luck that somehow it got shown at Cannes uh, and um, got some notice and got picked up by some museums in New York and shown to the public for a few weeks and that was it. Right. But then it just uh, sank into oblivion. And um, e even 20 years later, nobody was interested. So, I mean, the, the, um, the, the footage now is, has, has finally been uh, recreated into a, um, into a DVD. Um, I, I believe it was actually lost at so well, some of the, well, NASA's own footage of it was lost at one point? It's, it's, hard, it's hard to believe, but, after, but uh, a couple of years after Moonwalk was finished, um, the Technicolor plant out in California closed down its operations and moved uh, 30 or 40 years of Hollywood films out to some storage vaults in the desert. And uh, somehow it got misplaced or it was shipped back to NASA and they misplaced it, but it was the printing elements were gone, so you couldn't print it anymore. And it turned out that the, uh, the complimentary copy, 35 millimeter copy that I had, and I'd kept under my desk for, for decades in these big steel cans, was the only, the only copy of the uh, complete film. But uh, 
I know that um, uh, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Chris Riley then uh, discovered that you well, had Chris this. Well, um, Chris was um, uh, working on another, uh, another space film, and he kept running into, uh, he was researching, and he kept uh, coming across footage that he knew must have originated with, with my film, Moonwalk One, um, but they were trying to uh, track down these shots, and of course NASA had lost the original. So um, at one point they thought of um, Googling me, and, and, they, and because of the internet they found me right away, and, and we had phone conversations and uh, some emails over a few months when I was helping them with uh, uh, suggestions about their research. And then I happened to mention that I had a full copy of the film <laughs> sitting under my desk, and uh, so they began to hatch the plan of um, restoring it, which costs, you know, some, some money. And uh, restoring it and digitizing it and, and bringing it out in CD with extra features, which they shot. And they did a beautiful job. Excellent. So, I mean, for those who, who might want to pick it up now, what, what are the types of things that they can expect to see? I mean, is this a, is this a deep behind the scenes look at the shuttles themselves, at the astronauts? What, what's, the sort of, what's the sort of things that people if they can expect? Have, if they want to have a fun and, and, and sort of astonishing experience of what happened at that time, that's it. It's nothing, the technical stuff is there, but it's not, um, it's not overburdened with anything technical. It's just a feel for the event. Something that, uh, really is a milestone in the history of mankind, you know, the invention of fire when we left our planet to work on, an, to walk on another planet, you know, you got to mark these things down. Mm -hmm. And the farther we get away from the event, the more important it seems as a spot on the calendar. Absolutely. But I mean, so, you know, yesterday was the, uh, the 40th anniversary of, of the launch and, and so we're kind of in the midst of that entire... Right. They're uh, on, at, at this point, 40 years ago, they're on their way to the moon. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what are your feelings on, on where we go from here in, in, in terms of space travel and, and things like that? Interest you know, any, does seem to have died anybody, down Anybody who attempts to predict the future is a fool. I mean, look at uh, uh, Stanley Kubrick's and Arthur Clarke's 2001 A Space Odyssey. Look what he predicted for 2001. Nothing at all like that has ever happened. Who knows what will happen? I imagine, given enough time, we'll be out there in the galaxy. Theo, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, and I look forward to looking at the uh, Moonwalk One uh, DVD director's cut for myself. I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, insightful look into 1969 and the Apollo 11 mission.